Okay, so now that we have a path that artists can create inside of the scene, what we need to do is we need to give them the ability to assign all those paths to our top network. That way we can process it through and deform the terrain and get rid of any sort of foliage that might be intersecting the particular path. Okay, so let's take care of that in this lecture. All right, so to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to create another multi-parm block list. So what I'm going to do is launch the type properties for our top network that we're working on. Okay. And I'm actually going to put this right with the areas over here. So we basically want to mimic this same sort of setup, which is great because uh, we know how to do it already. Uh, let's just walk through the process one more time, just so that we um, solidify the information in our brains. All right. So we're going to call this paths. And then underneath that, we're going to create another folder, but this particular folder is going to be of type multiparm block list. This is so we can assign as many roads as we want. All right. And so remember what we need to do is uh, name these appropriately. That way we don't get lost inside of our parameters. And so uh, what I want to do is call this the path list. And this is just going to be called the uh, path HDAs like so. All right. And then underneath that, what I want to do is I want to put in a input to an operator path. All right. We're going to say any SOP. So any sort of geometry. And like before, we need to actually give this a particular name. Okay. Cause we're going to be looking for this particular name inside of our top network. Okay. So this is just going to be called the path asset. And I want to call the label just path and we need an A in there. Cool. So let's apply and accept that and let's get everything all set up over here so we can start to test this. Oh, and I also need to make that a collapsible. Uh, and you don't have to, I just, I like to do this for the unity Houdini engine for uh, unreal. I do kind of a mixture of collapsible and tabs because it works a little bit better inside of there. Um, outliner basically. Anyways, so what I want to do is I want to assign a path. So I want to create a path here and this path is going to take in our template path that we have been building over here. All right. And so all I need to do is hit that little guy right there and then just select the basic path. And so what we need to do is we need to get this particular path inside of our top network. So if you remember from before, the first thing that we want to do is drop down a wedge. Now I'm going to do this right after the split terrain because I want to uh, update the tiles of the terrain based off of how I'm moving the path around. All right. So if I move the path around um, the terrain, I want only the tiles that intersect that path to update. I don't want to update the whole terrain. Okay. So uh, let's just drop down a new wedge node. And so I'm going to call this get paths like so. All right. And the wedge count, if you remember, it comes from the amount of path HDAs we have assigned. So I need to copy this parameter right here. So let's copy that guy and go inside of our top network. And that's going to be our wedge count right there. So we'll say paste relative reference. And this will get the amount of paths that we have assigned to our multi-parm block list. And then what I want to do is create one single attribute. And this attribute name is going to be called path asset. And what we want to do is make it a type of string because the path itself is a string. All right. We need to get this into a string format. Okay. So that's why we're making that attribute a string. All right. And the values, if you remember from up here, the value, we just need to add one to it. The value is going to be that channel string. All right. And we have to remember also to increment it appropriately. Okay. So let's go back down to our new wedge node here. We'll add one. All right. And what we want to do is we want to say two back ticks. Then we're going to do channel string. All right. And actually an easier way to, to do this would be to just go and copy this parameter here. Just so we give ourselves a little bit of a head start so we can go and paste the relative reference. And you can see now we get that path asset. And what we really want to do is we also want to add on. We want to get rid of this, that one there. We want to add on that PDG index, right? So if we come up here again, 
we want to add on that PDG in index plus one because remember PDG index starts at zero. All right, so we can just copy this, save ourselves a little bit of time there. We'll just put that right after the quotation marks. And voila, there we go. So now if I were to uh, cook this, and by the way, you can actually do shift V on the keyboard, right? You can see that we get one work item because we have one path. And our path asset attribute has the string in it called obj ip basic path one. All right, so now what we need to do is we actually need to import all that geometry. Currently, we just have the path to that particular node, that SOP node, all right? But what we need to do is we need to import the geometry into our top network so we can start to work with it. And again, all we're gonna do is do a geometry import using that attribute, okay? Then we're gonna wait for all of them to be done and put it into a single partition node, okay? And then we're gonna import all that geometry. All right, so let's do that. So let's do a geometry import, like so. This gets the initial path from the work item. All right, so we want the uh, SOP node. All right, and we want to assign it that path. So that's going to be at path asset, like so. And we can always give this a name as well. Come down here, and actually this will be fine for now. We'll call this uh, path geo. All right, we'll cook this, so Shift-V. All right, so there we go. So now we actually have our path. Cool. All right, so then let's do a wait for all. This will basically put all of the work items that are inside of this. So let's say we have two, and let's actually go and do that. Let's test this out here really quick so we can verify that our wait for all is actually working. And so what I'm going to do is just move the curve a little bit. So I'm going to come over here and edit the default curve here. And let's just make it so that these two, you know, maybe intersect a little bit. I don't necessarily have time in this particular course to do intersections. That could be a whole course in and of itself, but um, it is completely possible. We're just going to go over the basics here. All right, so now I have two paths. And what I want to do is assign that to my path multiparm block list here. All right, so I'm going to add another one and we're going to go get path two. There we go. Very cool. So now we can jump back into our top network and I can hit shift V on the geometry import here and you can see now we have two. All right, so what we need to do, the reason why we're going to use this wait for all is because I want to partition all that into a single work item. All right, so if I were to pass this down and do a shift V, I have one work item that has both the roads or the paths in this case in it. All right, and then we do use that final geometry import to turn it into geometry that we can then pass into uh, the HDA that will go into form the actual terrain. Okay, so we'll say uh, get path geo all right and we're going to use the upstream fo result file that looks good and yeah i think everything's good let's actually cook this and there we go so if i were to turn this off here let's go up and out there <clears throat> you can see now we have the geometry it looks like i'm getting one path there let's go back in and check this out here really quick so we can always click on that link to launch the geometry player to verify all this stuff. And it does look in fact like I am getting just the single path. So let's take a look at this again here. And a better way to do this, let's actually just turn off our paths so we can see the results here. All right, so we got this one. So let's go and do this. So that's good. Cool. And we are merging it all together. So now I have both. Oh, I see. So we actually don't really need that last one. There we go. So now we have all the roads in one partition that we can actually pass into our terrain to use for deforming and texturing and stuff like that. Okay, 
Cool. So I'm going to close out the lecture there. And in the next lecture, we are going to focus on deforming the terrain with these paths. Thanks so much.